Welcome back to another episode of CAD Jungle. In today's quick episode, we're going to be going over some quick render settings. Okay, these settings are the settings I typically use when I'm rendering a project. Not necessarily something you may use, but just to give you an idea of how it works. Okay, so let's go over here. Let's click the render button. All right, now we're in the render environment. All right, so what I typically do is I make sure all my appearances are set. If for any reason I need to change that, I'm going to be doing that inside the in-canvas render. Okay. So what I typically do is I click in-canvas render. Okay. Now I go here and I select scene settings. In scene settings, I want to make sure I have the right environment uh, that I want to use. And for this one, we're going to be using cool light. If not, you could double click on any one of the actual default environments that come with Fusion 360. You can also add uh, custom environments by downloading HDRIs from certain websites. Okay. Now, typical settings I use for my environments are this. I leave the brightness as such. If I need to change that, I can basically take the slider and move it. But for this project, I'll just keep it here. Most importantly, position is very key for lighting. So I will click this icon here and I will drag the actual scene around the object to get the specific lighting that I want. And once I'm satisfied, I leave it there. And it gives me what I want. Okay. You could also click the reset button if you screwed up and just start over from scratch. When you're done, go ahead and click the icon again. Background is going to be environment, not solid color. If you want solid color, you can do that. And I'll click that and show you. Okay. And you can change the environment to whatever color you want. Click apply. It's not coming up. Okay, there you go. All right. But for this, we'll use environment. All right. Now, for the ground, ground plane is usually selected. Flat and ground, I don't usually select that. Reflections, I do because I do want reflections. Makes it look more uh, true to life. Camera is always perspective with ortho faces. Okay. Focal length, I usually set to 200 millimeters. You can actually set it to whatever you uh, deem necessary. And you can set your focal length to whatever you like. Exposure is usually set to 9.5. For depth of field, basically what happens with this is I can set it to be blurry based on the center point and everything around it to give you either a shallow or narrow depth of field. So when I click center focus, I have this green dot. Okay. Right here is the focal point. So I can basically change the blurriness. I'll set this to one and anything surrounding this from the center point, as it starts to fan out, it'll become blurry on both sides. Okay. But I usually set this to, let's say 0.04. Okay. Or you can also use the slider. Aspect ratio is going to be widescreen. Okay. Click close. Now, when I render, I click this tab here. But before I do that, I want to turn off in canvas render because I'm actually using PC resources. Okay. All right. And you got a number of options here. You can set it up for web and look at the default parameters there, mobile, print, video, or you can do your custom settings. Okay. Transparent background, very important here. So if you don't want a background, but you only want the object, which is actually pretty good. If you want to separate the object from a background, and you want to basically transpose it in another background, you can do that as well. Okay. You can select cloud render if you want to render in the cloud, but I typically use local render because my computer can handle it. For render quality, I always set excellent and you can click render. But for this uh, project, I'm going to click video, select 720p because it's for YouTube and it's going to be actually for a thumbnail. And I'm going to go ahead and select render. It'll let you know that local render is started. I'm going to go down here, select this uh, window right here, because it'll actually be the render in progress, and you'll see a window pop up. And it says it'll take about three minutes to render. I'll go ahead and stop the video, and once it's done, give you a final product. Now that the rendering is finished, here's your final product. Well, I hope you enjoyed this brief tutorial. Stick around, and I'll see you in the next video.